This is Ross for Castanato interviewing Jason Page at the December 2021 Los Angeles Comic Book Convention. So now, who were your influences before you started voice acting? Ah, I started voice acting when I came out of the womb. I went, ah! Ah! I was singing right away. That's a C sharp. Ah! Before I started voice acting, my influences were Go Speed Racer, Go Speed Racer, Go! And The Land of the Lost! And those old cartoons that I used to watch. Just sit right back, then you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip that started from this tropic part of this tiny ship. And then uh, I started doing jingles when I was uh, 25 years old. And I did Lego Mania! Lego Mania! And a whole bunch more. That eventually led to Pokemon. But my influences, you know, I guess on a personal level were, were like Bon Jovi. Ooh, she's a little runaway. Daddy's girl learned fast. All the things you wouldn't say. Which is kind of a Pokemon theme song type sound. But uh, my dad's a sax player. My grandfather's a drummer. Oh, cool. My mom is a very good artist. So... Nice. Uh, they influenced me, but, uh, and of course, you and I must make a pact, we must bring salvation back, where there is love, I'll be there, don't you know, baby, yeah. Michael Jackson, the ultimate influence uh, of nice. most human beings born after 1969. Uh, nice, cool. Very nice. Why would you say that those artists were your influ influences? Uh, they were because, well, I mean, a combination of, of what was put in front of me as a, as a child, uh, what my friends in high school were listening to, and what my parents had in the house. Actually, they had, you made me so very happy. I'm so glad you came into my life. Oh, so very happy, baby. That's uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, which I sang with for uh, a year on tour. I was there a singer. And that was actually, I was in the womb at a Blood, Sweat, and Tears concert with my mom. And then they had the album in my house when I was a kid. And then when I was in a band at age 13, the drummer's father somehow hooked up with Steve Katz, the guitar player of Blood, Sweat, and Tears, and produced my band. So he was uh, with Blood, Sweat, and Tears for whatever reason had a major impact and then I got to be the singer of the band after that the band that's had like 180 people in that band in the history of the band it's basically just a cover band covering Blood, Sweat, and Tears songs that bought the rights to the name basically. nice very nice out of all the characters in film and television that you voiced which one is your favorite? ah my favorite character out of all the characters I voiced wow I would have to say I want to be the very best at sounding like I am Ash because he's the voice that you think of in your head when you hear the Pokemon theme song. You're thinking of a 12-year-old who looks kind of like him. He's kind of young and he's kind of rocked and that's why I sing like him. That's, he's pretty much... I, I, I'm not doing his voice, but I'm doing his singing voice. I'm the, I, I basically, I feel like I'm the character, I mean, everybody is living Pokemon through Ash, and the song is written from his perspective, so I believe that I'm singing the character of Ash, at least it was when I did the theme song, but more specifically, the characters that I've done uh, are on my shirt here, what's, a, what's one, what's one, oh, you know what real character is really fun? When you get nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea, Pepto Max. That crazy character. <laughs> nice. nice, very nice. And can you can you please talk about uh, doing the Pokemon theme song? Uh, the Pokemon theme song was a uh, one of these sessions, one of you know five or ten a week I was doing at the time, and uh, we did. No, it's all right. Just in the middle of an interview. Don't worry about it. We didn't know what it would be, but we did know it was a Japanese popular show that had given uh, epilepsy seizures to a whole bunch of people when they played a certain episode. Then the news reported on it and caused a whole bunch of other epileptic seizures when they showed the clip on the news that caused the seizures. So that's all we really knew about the theme song. It was a normal session. 
It took a few hours to do. Catch him if you can, Pokemon! Was the first thing that they did. And that got kind of, you know, changed after a while. And uh, came back, did another session. It blew up. Soon it was Pokemon theme song extended mix that was done. And that uh, the rest is your history that you made as a listener, as a kid, in your imagination, not thinking of me, but just thinking of the idea of the song, just like when I think of Go Speed Racer. I don't think of Speed Racer, the guy singing it in the studio. I think of Speed Racer moving down the track. I think of it in my mind. It's it's part of the magic of Pokemon is that I'm not I'm not visual. Now that you're an adult, you want to know who this person is. But as a child, we don't want to let that person be, you know. And most people on my YouTube channel, they're like, I thought it was Michael Jackson. Because they just think it was this iconic thing that must be a guy like Michael Jackson. So, anyway, good question. All right, Next all right. question. All right. And, um, Sorry, I'll be with you in one second. I'm well, doing no an interview worries. here. I'm just you're getting, a, you're getting a whole full yeah, interview I'm, thing I'm here. listening and embracing it. Sure. Nice. Thanks. When you first started doing the theme song for Pokemon, did you ever think it would become the major classic anime show that it is now? Um, well, I did do Lego Mania, Lego Mania, and that was really huge at the time I sang Pokemon, so I knew that I could do things that would be really impactful in terms of success and played uh, multiple commercials and multiple events and things like that, but nobody knew what Pokemon could be, and nobody still knows what Pokemon can be because of its incredible growth rate, which is because of you and the, and the love that people have put into it. Not the love that the company puts into it, but the fan love. And all of these booths, there's Pokemon stuff at everybody's booth because they love it and because the fans love it. Pokemon has nothing to do with 90% of the stuff going on here. They have a booth in the other area and they're doing their part and they're doing it well. But what they're really doing is letting everybody else take the ball and really make it look he's got a shirt on it's because yeah. of his love that's right nice and he probably bought the shirt from some from game freak a whole nother company that's a t that's totally a derivative that bought the right it's just we are the ecosystem right here you are the ecosystem right. i am the ecosystem pokemon is just m managing the ecosystem very well nice and if you could have one musical artist that you would like to potentially share the stage with who would it be well We've already got Michael Jackson, and I sang the rap to Black and White with Michael Jackson at Madison Square Garden, and there was a whole bunch of amazing artists in that in that show. So I got to sing with Whitney Houston and Usher, Ray Charles, Liza Minnelli, uh, Luther Vandross. The list goes on and on. But you know who wasn't there? You are the sunshine of my life. That's my only be around funny I sing the Stevie Wonder song he didn't actually sing that part in that song with somebody else <laughs> I thought that it was the beginning if you could come to my rescue if I were to sing, but I don't want to sing with Stevie Wonder because after that there's nothing left uh. so I don't want to exhaust the final icon and influence in my life. I should have said Stevie Wonder was a major influence. Yeah. It was one of the albums that my parents had around. Cool. So, yeah, Stevie Wonder, good question. Very nice. And can you please do the Pokemon theme song for us before we go? I already did it with Ash. All right. We can good. do it if you want to get it. You can get it for professional purposes on the Cameo app. All right, which sure. Which is really cool. But thank you for this wonderful interview. My pleasure. To do this. My pleasure. Why would you say Stevie Wonder was a major influence for you, by the way? Because of his writing, because of his production, because of his playing, and I think because of his ethereal connection to sound, because he doesn't connect visually, he connects even more so with the audio. Very nice. Cool. Well, thank you for allowing me to interview. Thank you, sir. My pleasure, Jason. Well, there you have it. That was Ross for Cast. That was Ross. Your business that, here? Was, that was Ross for Castanaro interviewing Jason Page at the December 2021 Los Angeles Comic Con. Bam.